In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the cheapest supported iPhone in 2024. So first off, I'd like to go over the specs of this phone. This is an iPhone SE 2020, and we're running with an A13 chip. This is the same chip that was found in the iPhone 11. Next, we have three gigabytes of RAM. This is definitely a low amount for 2024, so it might cause some issues with usage. The SE is also rocking a 4.7 inch, 720p, 60 hertz screen. Definitely smaller than a lot of newer phones. We're rocking an 1821 milliamp hour battery. Pretty small battery. This is the 64 gigabyte model. The main camera sensor is 12 megapixels, and we're running on iOS 17.6. It is also also getting support for iOS 18, so that's definitely cool to see. And anyways, let's get on with these specific categories. Right off the bat, we have the design. Now, it's no secret that small phones are becoming more and more obsolete over time. This is why I think the iPhone SE's design is just so nostalgic. Everything on the screen is reachable with one hand, and it's just such a nice change of pace compared to recent smartphones. I think my only gripe with it would be that modern apps are definitely becoming more designed around wider aspect ratios like 20 by 9 or 21 by 9. So as a result, some apps can feel just a little constrained or squashed. But that says more about modern app design rather than the phone itself. Overall though, for form factor, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It's just such an iconic design and definitely something that I'd like to see future phones try to match in terms of one-handed usability. So definitely a good design, very iconic. Next up, I have general usability. Overall, the SE performs fairly well for day-to-day -day usage. iOS is known for being fairly optimized and it shows even with the aging hardware of the SE. Something you can't get around though are the increasingly large RAM requirements of modern applications. This is especially showing when you realize the SE only has 3 gigabytes of RAM. This can often lead to apps completely reloading, even if you're just switching between one or two apps. It just is definitely becoming more apparent that RAM is becoming a much more needed necessity on modern applications. There are also some minor lag spikes at times, but they don't disrupt usage too much, so it's not really a, a huge deal. I will give iOS credit though, for a 3GB phone, it is doing absolutely wonderful. iOS is definitely carefully optimized for lower RAM situations like this. So overall, I would give it a 7 out of 10 in terms of overall usability. It's fine. It's going to get the basics done, but do not expect to get any power use out of this. Any power users are not going to have a good time on this phone. What is the best gadget I use for my YouTube videos? There might be some of you that are saying, obviously, it's your phone. Like, you record all your freaking videos on there, all your footage. I would argue that this gadget is equally as important for most of my videos. And that is this little neck holder I have right here. Next, we have one of the arguably weakest points of this phone, and that's battery. When it launched, it was pretty just okay, mediocre, just in the middle. But four years later, it's definitely showing its age. You will not get a full day of usage out of this phone unless you're like a super light user. And this is especially apparent if you buy this phone used, like I did. You're not going to get 100% battery health out of these phones that are used and that's just adds to the whole entire mess of not having a good battery life overall i would give this a 4 out of 10 for battery but i'll give it an extra point and give it a 5 out of 10 because it does have pretty decent standby time definitely one of its weakest points though next up we have camera performance now this is honestly a very important feature for a lot of people people like to have good cameras on their phones i'm going to be splitting the camera benchmarks up into five different categories starting with daytime outside photos overall very good performance for daytime outside photos. Decently sharp and detailed pictures. Colors are not the most accurate and can come out washed out at times, but overall pretty good. Overall, outside photos are completely usable like 99% of the time and you, you shouldn't have any issues with it. So I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Next up, we have indoor photos. And indoor photos come out just fine, usually. Although sometimes if you're in a lower light situation, it can struggle a little bit. Images might come out a little noisy or undetailed. But overall, consistent colors, consistent performance inside. So I'll give it a six out of 10 for indoor photos. It's not the best, but it's also not the worst. It's pretty average. Next up we have low light photos and this is the weakest point of this phone. When you go into lower light scenarios, you'll often have this pretty bad shutter lag that you might not expect. And that can often lead to you moving your phone before the picture is fully taken and can come out super blurry. This would be fine if it had a dedicated low light mode, but it unfortunately does not.
Overall, very poor performance for low light. I would not be buying this phone and expecting good results in low light scenarios. 3 out of 10. Next up, we have versatility. Now, this is definitely another weaker area for the SE. We do only have a single rear camera, whereas a lot of other phones have two or even three, sometimes even four or more. So definitely a weak point for the SE. Zooming in is usually okay, but anything you pass three times zoom and it just starts looking a little smudgy. I will, however, give an extra half point for the cool presets they have for the portrait mode, as well as the color filter options they provide. Overall, versatility is not the best, but it does have some cool extra features that might come in handy. So I'm gonna give it a 5.5 out of 10. And the final category we're going to be covering is video. This is usually where iPhones do the best. iPhones have had pretty good video for a long time now, and it's no surprise that the SE is just pretty decent. While it's not the best in colors or quality, it's very consistent. It's not going to blow anyone's mind, but it does come out decently sharp, and the colors are consistent across multiple scenes. Completely usable for some basic social media stuff, some basic YouTube videos. In fact, I shot my entire gadget video with the SE. So overall for video, I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. Adding up all these scores I got individually, we come to a 5.9 out of 10. I will round it up to a 6 just for simplicity's sake. Overall, it's a very average camera. It's not going to blow your mind away, but it will get the basics right. And you can use it for any sort of casual photo taking or social media. So overall, definitely a pretty average camera, but it will get you by. If you just need a phone that does the basics and does it well, the SE is pretty solid. It's not going to blow your mind in any category at all, and it might disappoint you in some, like battery. But if you just need a cheap iPhone or any smartphone in general, it's a pretty no-fuss phone. Casual usage is just fine, and really there's no big reason I would advise against this. Although I will say the 2022 version definitely has a better chip and more RAM in it. So if you want to put in just a bit more budget, you can get a, an overall more balanced package out of that. Overall though, I think the SE is definitely a decent price for performance. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's definitely something different I'm trying here, so let me know if you guys enjoyed it. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye Thank you for watching.